Hello, I'm Sandra Pollock from Open Mind Coaching. I've been having some thoughts this morning around my own personal development and I thought I would share these with you. Now, I've been working on personal development for myself since I was 11 years old and I realised that I wanted to be someone I could be proud of. I really didn't know that it was called personal development at the time. All I knew was that there were things and people's behaviors around me that I was observing and experiencing that I didn't like. So I wanted to do what I could to ensure that my own behavior and outlook on life were different from those that I could see around me. I've continued to work on my own personal development since then sometimes getting it not so right, but always learning and taking responsibility for my life and the decisions that I make. One of the things that I've grown to love and like, I guess, is the use of personality measurements. Now, there are some good ones out there and there are some not so good. All are left to the individual's acceptance or not of what the report offers. I'm working currently um, on a partnership with uh, one of my colleagues and one of the things that we've been looking at is our personality preferences, how we communicate or how we like to communicate, how we prefer to receive information, how we deal with conflict and other things. And one of the tools that I have used for years is Myers-Briggs Type Indicator. I use this for myself and to support my clients as individuals, in teams, and within organizations. I became a practitioner and coach many, many years ago and actually thoroughly enjoy the tool and what it offers. So I looked back at my own report again. I hadn't looked at uh, it since 2020, um, and that was the last time that I'd completed the report again for myself. People do change slightly, as they progress through their lives. And I wanted to, to look to see if I changed any since the last time, many, many years prior, um, that I completed it. And I found that I have changed slightly and that was really interesting. However, going back to the partnership report I was talking about, I reflected on uh, drawing up this agreement and this made me look again at, uh, at the report, as I said, and I had to smile. I'm not sure if this um, resonates with you, but there are times when I wonder to myself, am I doing what I really should be doing? Or why am I so interested in certain things and not at all in other things? For example, my husband is really interested in cars, Porsches, for example. I am not that interesting. They drive well, I have one. But other than that, I'm not interested in um, that side of things but I am interested in people and I'm interested in what makes people think so, uh, and and respond to uh, the, the, the life around them and things that happen to them in the way that they do pretty much like myself I guess so looking at my own report always helps me to reconnect with and my own thinking, why I do those things, sort of helps me to answer those questions that might pop up in my head every now and again it's all about my preferences and values. And these reports help us to look at our individual preferences, our values, why we do things the way we do. And that's the sort of thing I absolutely love to find out for myself and other people. So we should note here that these preferences and values can change, but they only tend to change when we become more aware of what they are, when we consider if they're working for us, and decide to work on changing them if they're not. My re revisiting my Myers-Briggs uh, or MBTI report on communication and how I communicate was a reminder of my preferences in this area of communication and provided a little bit of a calming on my own focus and connecting, helping me to connect again on you know, why I am the way I am. So in case you're wondering, okay, my report says that I am an ENFP. So 
that means that I have preferences in my communication style for focusing on the outer world of people and activities. I tend to take in information from patterns, the big picture, and to focus on future possibilities. So I guess I would say this, but yes, I make a great problem solver and uh, I look at creating possibilities. My decisions are made primarily on values, on subjective evaluations, on people-centered concerns, and I tend to like flexibility and spontaneity in terms of my approach to life. And uh, with this, um, you know, I, I'm wanting to keep my options open. I don't like to feel caged in, in other words. So yeah, open options, yeah, flexibility, that's me. I shared this with my family and nobody was surprised. Yeah, can't we forget who and what we are sometimes, but other people aren't surprised with this um, report that I shared. I reflected on my business endeavors, the decisions that I make, the approach that I take. And you know, I found out that this is pretty much on the button for me. Every type has its own downsides, but focusing on understanding myself has helped me to, I guess, over the years, ensure that I create higher levels of satisfaction in my life, making the choices that bring greater satisfaction for me, helping me to understand um, why I have certain preferences. So every now and again, every few years or so, I go back to this and remind myself, connect again to myself, I guess is the whole reasoning for that. It has given me a greater level of awareness of those downsides so that I can recognize them. Would you <laughs> like to gain a greater clarity on what makes you tick and why? Would you like to better understand how to bring a higher level of personal satisfaction to your own life and to your business and business decisions? Well, if the answer to those questions is yes, then do drop me a line. I would love to help you look at um, answering these questions to support your own self-understanding and decision-making and uh, how you um, see the world and interpret the world, even if you're not always constantly aware of what you're doing and why you're doing it. So if you want to take an exploration into yourself, then do make contact, drop me a line. You can get me in terms of contact by email at sandra at sandrapollock.com or sandra at openmindcoaching.com. You can find me here on my website, drop me uh, an email through the contacts form on my website and you can also find me through my so-called social media streams uh, LinkedIn, Twitter, Facebook, uh, Instagram and uh, you know those are the main ones. So let's take this this step together into your personal self-development getting to know you better. Let's start this journey here. Thanks for listening and I look forward to catching up with you and more importantly, working with you to get the best out of yourself. Sandra Pollock signing out for now.